Hello and thank you for downloading this worksheet on how to build the outdoor pizza kitchen with me, Wayne Perry, the TV carpenter. Uh, I normally just do worksheets uh, for these downloads and I realised that if you could hear me talk and I could explain some of my workings, it might help you create it and create this, something similar to this pizza kitchen. And uh, the reason why we've called it Pizza Kitchen is I spoke with the producers of Spring Into Summer and they were saying we want to create something that everyone can make that you know is perfect for a pizza station. So I contacted Uni, the pizza company who supplied us with the pizza oven in this picture. And and um, I used it in my garden and with my family, my wife and daughter. And I realized I needed everything close to hand. You need to constantly feed it and um, put power in it, put fuel in it. And you need to be able to put all your toppings and everything. So I wanted to create something that was, was give me everything that I need for this pizza oven. So as you can read here, it said over the next few pages, I've tried to include enough information to get you started and hopefully give you the confidence to have a go at creating something similar. So... Don't mind if you go off piece a little bit. A lot of people have been making lots of my bills and develop them for what they need. And that's what's important. Make sure you, you adapt it for whatever you like. Um, I also said I've designed this kitchen around a 60 centimetre tile. So originally I was going to put a piece of uh, marble on there. And you can get marble about 30 for about 60 centimetre square for about 35 quid but you've got to seal it because marble's porous um, and then when I was in the tile shop tops tiles I said do you have anything that looks like marble that can be used for outside that I don't have to seal because um, once moisture gets in they crack so you need to make sure it's porcelain or something and he said yeah we've got this one and the one that you see in the picture it looks just like Carrera marble and I think it costs 16 quid from tops tiles so it's cheap as chips and it was just under 60 centimeter square and also, um, pallet wood comes in maximum lengths of around about 120 centimetres. So I decided to make the majority of the wood using, so it was like around about 60, so I could cut each plank in half and get double use out of it. So there wasn't a load of offcuts. Um, the height of it is 90, so some of those are a little bit longer, but I use those offcuts to create the shelves. Um, so yeah, so I've kind of had, given myself a few limitations, but I think it means it's more cost effective and everything is available for you to get. Uh, again, it's worth saying if you have any issues and you want any support, you can go to the DIY Doers Facebook group. It's a free resource where I'm there to help you. And also once you've made it, share your wins on there. I think that's really good to see. So let's go through this worksheet um, and hopefully it'll make sense. Um, just to say as well, the worksheets... You can print them all off and you've got them, but I thought it's nice to do a little video tutorial along the way so you can, I can explain why I've put certain things in here. So the Uni pizza oven that I used is um, a crude 12 inch multi-fuel, which means you can plug in gas at the back. Um, and I designed the pizza station so that at the bottom of it, there's a shelf so you can put your gas canister and then link that through to the back if you like. Um, I thought I'd use the gas all the time and to be fair I've never used the gas I've just used the fuel it works really quickly within 10-15 minutes it's up and running um, I'm a bit addicted to pizza now uh, so yeah so that's the uh, the pizza oven um, the copper piping along the front I literally had some 35 mil copper piping in my workshop I thought oh I'll use that and I bought the Munson rings which are these um, rings that you are really easy to attach you saw it on the show I literally just threaded it through um, they're about five quid each of the months and rings if I'm being totally honest it's been in my garden a while and already it's tarnishing is the copper it's not going to say stay pretty so if you if you don't want it to look um, as weathered I actually quite like it looking quite weathered um, I use copper you could just use you know your clothes rail tracks aluminium clothes rail tracks that you get um, in your you know in in your DIY store if you want to buff up the copper if you want the copper just use wire wool that'll bring off some of the tarnishing anyway but just so you know it's not going to look shiny shiny like it does in the picture right we already mine's been tarnished um the max made me do it oven glove on there that's just it's a local artist to me um this amazing artist who supplies who creates um, um bespoke cards and wallpaper and cushions and i just approached her she's a friend of mine and i said do you have an oven glove that i can use so that's why that's in the picture the frame timber, most of the timber in here is um, is pallet wood, but you need some framing within it. And that's in the next page. I'll show you why, where I used it. But I used some um, 
um, um, 4.7, 47 mil by 75 mil um, timber joists, and they're made for external, so they can be used. It's cheap wood, but because you're not really going to see it, but it's make sure it's made for outside. And the pallet boards I got from a company called palletboard.co.uk. This amazing guy called Dave actually approached me on Instagram ages ago, and I thought, oh, I need pallets. So I contacted him, and they literally, if you go on their website, they sell pallet boards by the uh, meter squares. And you literally say, you say, do you want it un um, sanded? Do you want it rough and ready? Do you want it? How thick do you want it? How long do you want it? Um, and it arrived within two days. It's still cheaper than buying brand new wood. So if you know, yeah, or you can just buy a pallet breaker and prize open pallets if you like. But because of the time frame that I had within the show and I wanted all the wood to be kind of uniform rather than me getting loads of different kinds of um, pallet boards, I went direct to this palletboard.co.uk. Um, really cool, really easy going. So yeah, I've worked out for this build, you need 24 pallet lengths. Um, they're 120 centimetres long. And that means I can cut them in half for 60 centimetres. Um, but yeah, that's where I got my pallets from. And like I said before, the Topps tile um, was from Topps tile and it was an Albus tile. Um, what's interesting is the tiles um, are, are different depth and stuff. And I'll show you how to level them all up in, in one of the next slides. So that's the materials you need. So the first thing I did is create two rectangle frames, one for the top and one for the bottom. I worked out that I wanted it 116 centimetres long and the internal length are 46 centimetres. So I cut a load of timbers all that same width and I attached attach them together like you see here. One's just one big rectangle and then the top one has some internal supports. The only measurement that you need to be conscious aware of is um, the one at the top shelf, the one in the middle, you need to be able to sit, um, that middle one needs to straddle both the uh, the tile and it needs to be able to attach the uh, the uh, top worktop as in the um, pallet um, pieces of timber that will form the bit that sits underneath the pizza oven itself. So make sure that that middle one is divided um, so that your it, it straddles both your tile and the timber. That's the only bit you've got to be aware uh, aware of. So whatever tile, length your tile is. Um, and then I created the legs. So I used 90 centimeter long pallet boards and I cut uh, eight of them. I cut, actually cut nine of them, and I'll explain where the ninth one is. But I cut eight of them for the legs, and then I attached them together. So they just overlapped and then screwed screwed in. I use glue and screw. It's always important when you're doing woodwork to glue it as well, because that's where the strength is. And then I joined them to the rectangles, um, particularly the top one. The top edge of the legs is in line with the top frame because that's where your your tile and all your worktop is going to sit on so all that needs to be in line and then i once i did that then i put the bottom rectangle in and originally i put it really low almost like touching the floor but then i realized when i was stood up against it my toe would hit it which I thought was really annoying because it means you've got to step a little bit further away from the counter. And if you think about your kitchen counter, you have those low level kickboards that are set back a little bit so your feet can go underneath the counter. So I raised it up by about 20 centimetres. So the top edge of that bottom um, um, frame is about 20 centimetres off the ground. And then I um, screwed all of that together. And that literally was my solid frame then. So everything now has a solid base to sit on and attach to. So that's how I created the frame. The next thing you need to do is the countertop. So the first thing I did is I put the tile on top of the frame that we created. So I put the tile on, you see on the top, on, on I will do it here. On here, I put the sat the tile on here, and it sits over this edge um, across all along here. Um, and then, so I put the tile on top. Then I did these left hand side um, um, pieces of pallet board on here, um, and so they were all buttered up nicely. And what was really interesting, I didn't follow my own advice. And what I did is I put this on. And there was a little bit of a gap at the back, you know, it just worked out. And it all depends how thick and how wide your your pallet boards are. 
I did it and I had them all really, as you can see here, they were all really tight next to each other. And there's a bit of a gap at the back and I thought, well, I'll leave the gap at the back because you're not going to see it. It means I don't have to cut a long length of, of a little slither and I just left it. And what's interesting, it's been raining quite a lot and all of these timbers have expanded as they do in the weather. It expands and contracts as timber and it started to buckle. And I realized I hadn't given myself a little bit of a, a shadow gap, a little bit of an expansion gap. So uh, recently I had to unscrew all of these and then re-screw them down again, giving myself about three mil gap between each one. Maybe a little bit more, three, four mil gap. And what that does, it allows the wood to expand and contract. So don't do what I did and make them really tight. Give them some space between. So once I'd attached those down and the tile was in place, it meant then that I wanted to tidy up this edge. I didn't want it to, because as you can see here, it just looks a little bit naff. So I added this little infill here because obviously um, behind there is the timber frame and then I put the leg on the front and it means there's a little bit of a gap there. So I added some just off cuts in along the front edge and then I wanted to attach a piece of pallet board that went all the way round three sides which would tidy up this because you don't want to see this ugly edge. So it tidies up all of this edge round here. But what I decided, I wanted to create a box that went along this left-hand side here, which overhangs. You can see it overhangs from the mainframe. And the reason why I wanted that box, because I realized when I'd been using the pizza oven, you need to always, like every couple of five minutes, you're putting a little bit more coal in or a little bit of char or a little um, kindling or wood or anything like that, pellets in there, just to keep the, the fire going. So I thought if I create this little box, I can put my kindling, I can put my logs or my pellets, anything there. Um, charcoal there just to because this is this handle at the back is where you feed the pizza oven so i thought well rather me just have something that just adds on that's just floating i incorporated it into this front piece of timber here so i built this box you can see i built this box and i then th this is the front edge timber and then i attached it on and then I, so then once i dressed all the way around it kind of made it all look nice and tidy if you notice as well in this picture, there's a little bit of a lip there. And what that what that does, obviously the tile sits in and it drops down. So it's all in line. So that front edge needs to be in line with the timber and the tile. I mentioned earlier as well that the tile generally is thinner than the timber that you're using. And it all depends what pallet boards you use. They're all slightly different. So you've got to bit bear that in mind, the, t the, the difference between them. Um, and what I put, I can get some little rubber stoppers, some, or you can get little foam things. And I put them, all, um, a few of them, on this timber frame. And then when I put the tile in, it just sat into it and had something to, to cushion into. But it meant that the tile was then in line with the timber um, um, frame, the timber um, worktop, the pallet tops. So all in line. So nothing worse than having like just a slight little lip difference. Yeah, so that's worth noting there. One thing I, I realise I need to mention is I've measured this at 46 centimetres and then you've got 7.5 centimetres, 7.5 centimetres, it's 15. So overall it's about 50, 60. But just bearing in mind that this these timbers are like 2 centimetres, 2 centimetres, you've got to incorporate that to make sure that it all fits with 60 centimeter tile. Does that make sense? So whatever size tile you do, you've got to take into consideration this thickness of the, of the pallet board, this thickness of your timber, this thickness, whatever you put there, and that as well. So overall, it's round about 60 centimeters. I hope that makes sense. And I'm only saying that because that will vary in different sizes depending on how thick your pallet boards are. Some are really thin, some are, some are like two and a half centimeters. So just bear that in mind. Okay, so that's how I did the um, the top and the edge. And then I then put some um, slats within here. And I wanted that farmhouse look, so there's bigger gaps there in between. And that means we can put the, this is below, we can put the gas canister or, you know, put boxes there or any storage or anything underneath. It just, and also, like I say, it gives the whole thing, it looks really lovely, but also it gives the whole thing some strength. So that's how I did the countertop. Now the back, um, the raised bit at the top. 
Um, I added a vertical 90 centimeter leg. Obviously, these are, are L shaped. I just added one here because this is what this attaches to, which is the raised bit. And I used some of that timber batten and I cut two of them at 180 centimeters long. And then I added one in the middle at 45 centimeters, which gave an overall width of 60 centimeters. Yeah, and I've kept it at 60 centimeters. It could have been wider, could have been narrower, but I kept it at 60 centimeters so that I could cut down my palette boards in half and then attach them all the way up, right? So that's how I created uh, the frame. Um, you don't need one at the bottom because you're not gonna see it. And these two verticals are gonna attach to this here. And the only reason I've added this one is because obviously it's it, it would set it would wouldn't be in line with this one on the left, so we've added that there, and that's how I created the framing for the shelves, the raised shelves. I then turned it around, um, and I made a box that goes on the top, so you can see along along here. This is a box, and it's sticking out a little bit at the back. So I made almost like a window box that goes. On the top and I try and do it minimal cuts so I had the plank along the front I had uh, a plank along the back and then a plank up the uh, uh, um, uh, uh, along the bottom sorry and then a plank at the back and then two little infills inside so I didn't have to cut any long lengths of 60 centimeters I just literally do it the easiest way possible so you can see here there's a vertical there's a full plank that way Oops, don't want that. There's a full blank that way, and then there's one up this side as, as well. So I created the box on the top, and then I worked my way down and just put some um, horizontal planks coming down. And I decided to create some little shelves using the off cuts here. So that is the, the backboard. That's that board there. And then I put a piece of timber there and a piece of timber there, and screwed it, screwed it from the back, and screwed it down the sides there glued and screwed and this little bit here you could just put a piece of timber there but this piece here means it's got something to stop it from falling and to add a little bit of detail I just cut the corners off just made it look a little bit more interesting and I staggered the shelf so that when there's a bottle here it can stand up quite tall it can stand up quite tall and then there's that trough in there that box in, in the top you could put uh, on the show, um, my lovely friend Camilla did a whole raised box, didn't she, for different herbs. But you could use that as your herb. So you could put your basil or your tomato plants all along the top if you like. It's worth noting as well, screw a hole into this because you don't want it filling with water. So if there's any drainage over time, if it's outside, you don't want that. I then use a piece of pallet board down the edge here. Actually, this was another piece of pallet board that I had lying around in the garden. So it was a thinner piece. And I added that to the side. It could be a thick piece but I added that down the side just to tidy up the edge you can see it here as well it's down here and it covers the the board um, the, the batten and it covers the edge of all of these pieces of timber I also learned from my mistake before and I put um, a shadow gap I always like to have with vertical so I just put a little bit piece of packer in there and I worked my way from the top so I put the the top bat at the top trough on the top overhanging slightly forward then I did a space um, and what that does it allows for expansion like we've talked before then I put the next board put a spacer in put the next board and I work my way down like that um, and I think are you what did one two three four five six um, so there's was, there was six shelves as it were and I did that so it was around about eye level I didn't want to be reaching too high so it's a nice eye level to use and so this was created as a separate piece that then I attached to the main frame so so then I attach the main bit at the back to the front and obviously the behind here there's that vertical um, leg behind which meant I could attach screw it all to and I did that as well so I can take it apart and I could travel with it and take it onto location and then bring it home in the van um, and it makes it lighter the whole thing lighter as well so then I added this copper rail at the front and like I said before I use these Munson rings I had some spare 34 mil pipe and I use, you can buy one of these about five quid, um, which you tighten up and just twist and it'll cut a perfect um, copper pipe. And what's lovely about this, I realized that, yeah, it holds the Max Mame Do It um, tea towel and oven glove, but you need this as your, um, your peel, it's called, and your paddle. You can just, it can just slot in. Um, so as you know, so you've, it's nothing's touching the ground. It's all there because it's going to be touching food. It's all to hand. 
So there we are, under 20 minutes. I hope that makes sense. I uh, hope you enjoy building this. And if you need any support or help from me, go to the DIY Doers Facebook group. Share your wins. Let me see what you've made. I want to see it. The only thing, oh, like I put some measurements on there, but the only thing to be wary of is, like I say, pallet boards come in different sizes. So you have to adapt them to whatever you're using and adapt them to whatever tile you use. But good luck with it. I hope you have a good, great uh, summer and I hope you get to enjoy your pizza oven. And uh, thank you for listening to me, Wayne Perry, the TV carpenter. <laughs>